Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick lecture on cholera and how we can uh, take some raw data and transform it to make a compelling case to uh, the health department. And so um, the worksheet for today, uh, if you're interested, or for this uh, class session is right here. Um, the idea is that you're given some data that has locations x, y, and has a method to calculate the distance between one location and another location. There's a set of water pumps, a set of cholera deaths, uh, each which know their location. Um, and so take that data and come up with a way in which to make a compelling case. Um, and I want you, you know, uh, you can read through this. It says, imagine that it's 1854 and you have access to computing, uh, write a high level design document and, and pseudocode to try to figure out how you're gonna do this. Um, I encourage you to do this, uh, pause the video and do that. It's uh, the subject of today's uh, lecture and the uh, assignment. So um, pause and come back. All right, we're back. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed that. Uh, I will leave it to you to um, take that design document and pseudocode and turn it into a compelling case. I hope that um, a lot of you enjoyed the uh, the background on this. I certainly did. I really enjoyed these lectures. Uh, those uh, videos were very compelling. Uh, this is a very important and uh, compelling story. Uh, John Snow is the uh, founder of, uh, one of the founders at least, of the modern epidemiology, the most famous one. Um, which is not uh, just sort of the study of uh, how disease spread through populations rather than uh, maybe specifically the disease itself, uh, sort of more focused on its spread. Um, he located the source of the cholera outbreak and established it was a waterborne disease. He's up there with Jonas Salk, I'm one of the most important people, uh, I would say, uh, of the last couple of centuries. And a uh, bonus, he looks exactly how I would imagine 19th century English physician would look like. Um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is the original map that he drew um, in, I'm sure, a very uh, many uh, sleepless nights um, and presented. Uh, it's it's uh, literally the picture on the epidemiology page. If you go to Wikipedia, um, the the picture they're going to have is, there it is, the map he drew. Uh, this is a, a big event in epidemiology and uh, was no small task. A um, couple of questions. What is miasma? Uh, miasma is just uh, bad air is what it calls. Uh, miasma theory is that uh, diseases are spread through the air, uh, through bad uh, air. And uh, what are the origins, people are asking? Uh, there's origins to this, all sorts of cultures. In Europe, uh, no less than the Hippocrates uh, talked about the importance of the environments on help, uh, uh, Hippocrates of the Hippocratic Oath. Um, he also discussed uh, air as well as water qual uh, quality, so I don't want to uh, completely besmirch uh, Hippocrates' um, reputation. But this idea that uh, bad air was the key to everything um, was definitely prevalent at the time. Um, when did miasma uh, theory get fully shut down? It was eventually replaced by germ theory. Uh, John Snow and the cholera break had an outbreak uh, proving that it was waterborne had a lot to do with that, um, but it takes a little while. Uh, more people are asking about this. Uh, assuming the existence of bacteria was not known at this time, um, and when was it discovered to cause infectious diseases? These two things are very different. Uh, questions. Um, Enamalula, I guess. I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, Levin Hook, when he first uh, got a microscope, uh, one of the first things he did was grab some pond water, threw it under there, and saw uh, little um, little animals running around, uh, little uh, bacteria. Uh, and so that's uh, 1675. It takes a long time, a long time, uh, to just around uh, 54, you know, sort of the time of Jon Snow, uh, 47, 48, uh, this guy in Vienna, Austria, uh, convinces people to uh, all the doctors to start uh, cleaning their hands before each examination with women. And what do you know? Uh, mortality rate for women in this uh, maternity clinic um, fell from 30% to 1.3. Good job, uh, this guy. Um, and then, uh, so that's right around the time of snow and this whole thing. Um, and it took Coke uh, with the uh, 1882 uh, to actually show a correlation of a microorganism with disease that was tuberculosis. Um, so it takes a while from first seeing it to sort of like, um, you know, actually showing that it's correlated with disease, but it's certainly an exciting time that John Snow was operating in. Uh, why did not everyone, uh, did no one even listen to John Snow even when it had every degree of honor possible? Um, this is because it was known to spread through the air is one uh, thing. Uh, we're gonna talk about this a little later. Uh, now it's known to be spread through cholera and uh, through the water. And so, um, you know, we're going to have an open-ended assignment. It's relatively open-ended. I'm not interested in you shutting down the wrong pump. Again, known to do that, uh, the sort of 
And you get these automatic biases when you know something and so that the uh, the bar is higher for you to prove it otherwise. Um, certainly <clears throat> from the video, it seems, this seems pretty compelling to me, right? Uh, of which side of the street you were on, like one goes into the well, the other goes not into the well. It's, one would hope that would have been enough to convince people, but no. <clears throat> sort of giving some stuff, I looked into this. Um, you know, um, cleanliness of pure air is the utmost uh, consequence uh, for preventing cholera. Keep your windows every day. This is from 1859. Um, there's another one from the New York Board of Health around 1832 um, uh, that both mentions that uh, the air, but also cold water. Um, sadly, uh, above all, from ardent spirits. Ardent spirits are, uh, you know, sort of like brandy. Um, and so uh, there's a little bit of this temperate in drinking and everything like that, uh, which is very tragic given that how uh, the guys who drank nothing but beer were fine. Uh, but there is the mention of cold water here. So I don't want to uh, uh, make it so everybody was, uh, you know, confused about this whole thing. Or there's definitely an air and water sort of situation going on. Tragically, people are saying don't uh, drink alcohol, which would help you or prevent it. Um, but that's another story entirely. Uh, what is cholera's ideal parallelism? Uh, uh, cholera's ideal parallelism is outstanding. It is a replicating, um, uh, it's a self-replicating poison uh, in, you know, 1854's terms, uh, which was sort of beyond their uh, uh, grasp, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and why did his colleagues ignore his proof? Uh, dilution of poison uh, is kind of the idea, and this idea of self-replicating is the problem. Um, the idea, people had this idea that, um, if you put a certain amount of arsenic in water, you could kill somebody. If you put it in a ton of water, it would dilute, and then they wouldn't get even sick from it. And the idea that the, you could put enough poison into the Thames was kind of crazy to people. There's so much water there um, and not possible. Um, but, uh, you know, the fact that it would sort of be self-replicating was, was not really in there um, in what they were thinking about. Um, again, another one. Why would anyone build their uh, water plant downstream from a waste plant? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, one that I uh, I do not have an answer for. Um, how did they not know they were drinking water with sewage in it? I think uh, this is an also an excellent question. I think that all of us don't really have a concept of what life was like before chlorinated water. Um, and uh, maybe the water just always uh, had that kind of uh, stench to it. I don't really know. Um, but thank thank goodness for chlorinated water. It's outstanding. Um, how the hell did Jon Snow get, not get chlor cholera? A bunch of these questions. Uh, how did he not get cholera given how he interacted with He just went around and talked to every single family where somebody died from, from cholera. He like did that whole thing. And it's like, how did he get it? And the answer is extremely simple. He didn't drink the water, right? And it's not spread through the air. Like this alone should have been huge evidence. He'd be like, hey, um, we don't believe you, John. And he's like, look, I just went and talked to absolutely everybody who got this thing, uh, and I'm fine. <laughs> uh, I keep doing this over and over again. I don't drink the water. That's a little bonus, but um, the nice thing is he's completely safe because uh, it's not spread through the air. Um, why did the government put the handle back on the thing? Um, they did do this. Uh, they put it right back on. Um, would you have drunk from it? Um, uh, not me. I probably would have walked a little bit for a while. Um, uh, they should have put it in a museum, and of course they have. This is a uh, the pump. Um, they have uh, since uh, taken it out and put it in a museum. I'm sure of epidemiology. Nice job, John Snow, Snow who uh, saved those people. Um, did John Snow get awarded while he was alive? Uh, tragically, no. He died four years later um, uh, at the age of 45 from a stroke, uh, which is very sad. Uh, but uh, looked into this a little bit afterwards. They rejected his theory. Um, you know. Uh, it was sort of, they just sort of rejected this fecal oral route of disease transmission, which was too unpleasant, I guess. Um, one of the guys who was a big, uh, you know, big opponent of this whole thing, you know, realized to some degree the validity of this diagnosis, um, but denied the exact explanation, although the evidence he produced did in fact help Jon Snow's uh, position, because of course it was correct. Um, so there you go. So uh, not a lot of, not a big happy story ending for Jon Snow. Um, how do these uh, videos link to it? Uh, we're going to do uh, Vernoy diagrams. Uh, can you uh, do Vernoy diagrams in parallel? Um, yes, absolutely you can. Um, I have some links here to Vernoy diagrams. They're very cool. You can uh, compute the Vernoy diagram. If you look at these points, these are the polygons. 
if you will, that show the area of the closest point, uh, closest every single point to its closest well. This looks a, uh, or point. Uh, this looks a lot like wells, and uh, what John Snow uh, created uh, because he sort of invented Vernier diagrams without actually realizing that that's what they would eventually be called um, to solve this problem, as well as do an incredible bit of visualization um, in his, I'm sure, sleepless uh, couple of days. Uh, you can do this uh, in a divide and conquer way. You can actually build it up front and uh, in back. It has to do with uh, triangulating things um, and how you divide it up. You can actually, there's sort of a merge sort kind of uh, divide and conquer algorithm and a quick sort one, one that does the work up at front and one that does the work afterwards. Um, and so uh, I've actually contemplated making this the replacement for a merge sort is to do parallel Lenore diagrams. It would be fun. It would help for this particular assignment. Um, oh, if only John Snow had more than one core as a CPU. Uh, it's a great uh, joke. I like this question. Um, uh, sort of a lot of people have heard of the um, analytical uh, engine or the difference engine from uh, Babbage and the one that Ada Lovelace was the first program on. Um, a lot of people don't realize, so that was predates uh, John Snow. Um, that was sort of a hypothetical machine. Uh, the Jacquard, I don't know if they just probably just destroyed that French name, um, Loom, right here, um, actually existed physically. Um, and uh, you could set these uh, punch cards to it. Um, this is, uh, they've actually had this for a while. You could program um, how you wanted the loom to go in these punch cards and you could crank it through. Um, it might be difficult to uh, write uh, map reduce on, but like uh, just kind of an interesting side of like how uh, there was some amount, some inkling of something related to computing even before snow. Um, when did they end up figuring out how to, about using glucose to help retain sodium? Uh, the best I could find in this is a, an article in like 1964. It looks like uh, the army, uh, Captain Phillips of the army was the first one to do this. Uh, it's a very um, simple uh, you know, solution to prevent the worst parts of cholera, uh, it's basically Gatorade. Um, uh, but yeah, it took a while to get to the point where they uh, found a better way to deliver that. Uh, tragically, cholera is still with us. Um, uh, there was actually an outbreak just this winter in Haiti. Um, and so uh, we still have work to do on a lot of fronts in the world. Um, interesting videos. I'm dying to know how this related to CS. I like the capitals, Don Dying. Um, how does uh, relate to the concept of the class? Uh, basically, uh, the grand vast majority, we ask this question of like, what on earth is this doing here? Um, uh, however, I'm unsure to do this. Uh, will we uh, will we be mapping the infections in the distance to find the disease well in the assignment? Boy, that sounds good. Uh, something along those lines might help you. Um, and so we're going to have this exercise. Uh, it is open-ended. Uh, like I said before, we are. Um, I'm not interested in your evidence. Hmm, let me rephrase. Uh, you have a very high bar if your evidence shows that it was a pump other than the broad street pump. So I'm open-ended to some degree. But again, you know, there are these biases against uh, you. Uh, don't be thwarted if you know if you can prove that uh, cholera is not waterborne. Uh, I look forward to your um, your Nobel Prize uh, and your uh, of course acknowledging me. Um, if you um, we have anticipated a couple of your uh, different approaches. If you have another approach, let us know. We will work with you to try to reify that design. Um, there's a lot of interesting, useful things about this story, I think. One is to not sweep inconvenient data under the rug. Um, there's all this incredibly inconvenient holes in these uh, things where you could try to avoid it. He doesn't at all. Um, and his 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 just beautiful work of just like actually going out and uh, doing the legwork and figuring out, oh, none of these guys in the brewery got sick. They drink beer all the day. Um, is really kind of helpful because there was this bias against, you know, um, uh, people and how uh, people who drank <laughs> and uh, you know like you can see the health board being like oh yeah yeah those guys are a bunch of drunkards of course they don't drink water um, and so like there's these things where like you know if you you know if you didn't if you tried to sweep the data under the rug it might you know it might seem like a good idea but then it ends up being very powerful evidence to just take the data and come up with a pure clean algorithm um, let's talk a little bit about how we're going to do this um, First of all, there's, uh, let's uh, go a little further over. There's this one file, which you're gonna start from called cholera outbreak. Um, it is located right here inside of MapReduce apps, cholera exercise, cholera outbreak. 
There's a couple of files here. One's the value representation. Um, you shouldn't have to worry about this. Uh, value representation has a couple of different things. I am going to try to guess on what your thing is doing. Um, so I have auto detect on. You should be fine. The grant, uh, the grandmaster dirty of all things, you don't have to worry about what's going on here. Um, people are going to return a map that goes from a particular water pump to some number. Uh, to be clear, uh, there are a couple of things that extend number. You can hit uh, Control H here or Command H on the Mac. Uh, got it. Well, I don't know what that was. Um, integer and double are two of the things that extend number. And so, um, you know, it's it's undoubtedly going to be one of those two. Either your thing is going to transform the data into something that's integers, uh, where the water pump goes to some number which is an inner or double. Um, from within that, between that, I'll look at this map, figure out are the integers or doubles, and then I'll look at if you leave at this auto at uh, auto detect, I'll try to figure out if the high numbers are alarming or the low numbers are alarming. Again, you shouldn't have to worry about that, um, but if you are interested, uh, ask one of us. Um, the other one that you also shouldn't be uh, too concerned about is threshold of applicable. Most people do not write their algorithms such there's some magic threshold out there that works. Uh, that is the key to their approach to producing evidence. Um, so this is by definition false. And But if you decide that you're like, hey, I have this magic constant in my thing, which is like some threshold, which I decide um, something about wells and death, um, enter this in, again, talk to us, and we'll help you through this. The grand vast majority of people, like I said, don't need that one either. Um, what they'll do is, what you'll do is you'll focus just on this one method, which is produce evidence. You be past the list of caller desk, and you need to um, return some map that um, goes from water pump to a number. Now, you can use MapReduce. Um, you don't have to. Um, I would encourage you to uh, think about transforming your data in some way, though, to do this. Um, and you can, of course, tunnel around and find these. Um, this is the water pump. Uh, it has a bunch of locations. You can see them here. These are all the map, the things from his map. Um, and these files over here, um, if you look at this guy, this guy lives in pre-aspect. And um, these are just the core things. I needed to do that for a little bit of testing. Um, most of all, well, not most, uh, your work will be here. You are free to use cl um, classes from previous sections of this class. You're also free uh, assignments or exercises or whatever. You're also free uh, to create new classes if you need them or whatever. So um, feel free to, uh, treat this as a somewhat open-ended project. When you're done, um, you can run this uh, cholera outbreak viz, which if I run it right now, um, it will, uh, like I said, look at the what your produce evidence returns and um, look at the maps data and try to figure out, I would be like, oh, I guess based on the fact that it's integers and stuff like that, this is what you're doing. And I will um, see that everything you're doing is matching up. There are other approaches you can have. It sort of does a rendering of um, the the outlierness or the, the the highness of its alarming number uh, to things. You need to see the smaller values down here have lower values. So Oxford North it must be somewhere around here, somewhere that doesn't do it. There's Newman Street. You can see Newman Street only has 24, so it's a little bit smaller. Um, that and uh, some of the other ones are even tiny. So let's go back to the slides. Um, um, like I said, you're encouraged to do things from other exercises and stuff like that. Um, a lot of people ask your coach, uh, like, what if there are two offending wells? Um, your algorithm should be very clean and work for an arbitrary thing. The last thing I want you to do is write a map that says, well, return the broad free pump as a thousand and everything else is zero. That would not be a very compelling case to the, the Board of Health. Um, um, you should look at the data, come up with a clean, clear algorithm that uh, would convince a, a health board to turn to please take the, the handle off the well. Um, and if you had a set, if the set of data actually had two offending wells and they were on the two sides of town, um, your algorithm should wear that out. It should show, oh, by the way, these both are, are bad. Um, and so you should be able to apply this to an arbitrary new case, right? That would find, find uh, the well in that, or wells in that case. Um, it should go also without saying uh, to build this visualization, I had to put in 
some hard-coded values for these things. Uh, it should go without saying, you should not copy one of those provided hard-coded solutions. Um, and uh, hopefully this assignment is compelling enough that you will, or no one would ever do that. I won't even worry about it. Okay, um, and so the viz is there for you to run when you're uh, checking out as well as some tests. Uh, this was fun. Uh, could we do more properties like that? Uh, a couple of people said this. Uh, that's the idea. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoy this assignment. Um, and uh, with that, good luck and have fun on this. Like I said, it's open-ended, uh, but we're not interested in you shutting down the wrong pump. Again, just like Jon Snow, if you have a case that you can show that it's not uh, a particular water pump, and it is spread through the air, we're interested in that, but the bar is higher. Um, and with that, uh, good luck and have fun.